How do you measure up? I don't mean in this big game of life that we're all playing. I mean whilst you're using Inkscape. How do you measure up? Well, most people will use the Align and Distribute menu. But if you wanted to use the Measure tool, how? Well, today, I'm going to show you. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial and today it is all about the measure tool. This is one that's been requested a few times now so I thought I would cover it in its own separate video. So without further ado, let's get started. You can find the measure tool right here on the left hand toolbar. You can have the shortcut of M as well to get there quicker but this is the icon that you'll be looking for now as you can see on screen I've just put some random shapes onto the canvas now at the moment it's just some circles some rectangles with the rectangles tool and of course some text I am also going to add an image because I want to show you exactly how they work so I've just added my stay creative tag and as you can see if I click on it in the bottom information bar you can see that this is just an image it's a PNG file but I have not added the SVG file so this is just recognized as a standard image as such that means I cannot interact with this in the same way that I could interact with all of these now when it comes to the measure tool as you highlight things it will automatically give you all the dimensions of whatever object you are highlighting so if i do this as you can see it gives me the width the height the x and y values and of course the length all in pixels and if i go to the next one over as you can see this one has the same width and height which is 567 pixels and if I move to this one now it's going down because as you can see the size of the circle is also reducing as I go further towards the right. Now when it comes to the text, the text will not change because it's all classed as one object. And now when we move back down here onto the rectangles again it'll be the same as the circles. Now, at the simple level, the way that the measure tool will work is it will allow you to click and drag a line. Now, when you start clicking and dragging a line, the line that you're controlling is the blue line that you can see, which is currently at 315 pixels, just like that. And the angle. So the angle is always going to go off to the right or the left. And as you can see, if I go to the left, it's creating a full radius with the red line. This is your angle. So depending on where you put this line depends on the angle that you're going to be getting. Now, when I release, I have made my first measurement line, as you can see. So now let's give you a rough explanation of what this line will do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this going all the way along the circles. Just like this. And as you can see we have now got a lot of values opening up. But the one thing that I want you to pay particular attention to are these little X's here. Now because this black line is just a stroke, it will always go from the center of the stroke. If this was its own object, then it would go from the outer edge. And as you can see, along the line that I created, we now have X's all along that line marking every significant point. So the outer edges of every object it crosses over. And as you can see, it gives you the width of that line in the center of every object it goes over and the gaps so as you can see this is a gap of 117.82 pixels this is now going to allow you 
to be extremely precise when it comes to measuring up your designs and in certain designs this is going to be very needed now of course like you've just seen me do these red dots at the end of the line allow you to pick up and move the end and start points so you can then move them to whatever position that you want so that's basically how it will work now when you come up into the properties toolbar you will see all of these options in front of you now your font size right here this is going to relate to the actual size of your values as you can see this number is quite small but if you want to make it way more visible you can of course increase this font size so if i increase it to say 25 now as you can see these values have significantly increased and become a far far more legible precision precision is about the decimal points that you will get in all of your values so as you can see 2213 point and then there is two digits after five two that's because of my precision of two if i was to decrease the precision as you can see it will automatically reduce and round up my pixels to the nearest number now when it comes to the measurement units at the moment i have pixels but of course you can use whatever values you want from centimeters to millimeters to pixels to points to inches you get the general idea now as for these icons they are quite confusing until you know exactly what they do now as you would expect this first button right here will say measure only selected what this will do is it will only give you the measurements for the object that you currently have selected now the next icon right here this is ignore first and last what that will do is it will ignore the sections from your start point to the first object that it comes into contact with. So this little section here that overhangs on the left and alternatively the right side as well. So this will be a measurement from our end point to this X here. Now if we were to deselect this, as you can see the measurements now have completely reappeared and also it has given me the total length of all of them from the start point to the end point is 2465.9 pixels now this one is pretty much the same except in reverse when it's selected it will give you every single section length but when it's not selected it will just give you the initial selection so the first point it hits and the last point it hits so it's now giving us the full length now show the hidden intersections that's going to do exactly what it says on the tin it's going to show you any kind of hidden intersections that you wouldn't normally notice very handy when you've got objects that are very close together now when it comes to measure all layers this is going to be exactly what it says when you're in the layers menu you can of course set up multiple different layers for every section of your design so if you wanted to do the colors in one layer you can and then do the line work in another well with this button pressed it is going to ignore all the layers and it will measure everything that can be seen so it will measure every single layer that you have in your layers menu reverse measure is exactly what it says as you know the start point is the left node here and the end point is the right node right here well if you want to reverse them so this end node becomes the start node and vice versa you press this one now as you can see i have a little bit of an angle now of course you can hold control 
and just like you would with a stroke to lock it onto the vertical axis and to go in 15 degree increments. Now with phantom measure enabled, what this is going to allow you to do is keep what you've already got. So as you can see, my previous measure line is still already there. But now because I've selected this button, I am able to select a completely separate line. So we can now get lots more information from the bottom of the design, not just the top. Now, when it comes to enabling guides like you've just seen me do, you will get something that looks a little bit more like this. Now, what this has done is it has taken all the intersecting parts and it has created a vertical and horizontal guides that you can then snap onto later. Now, of course, you can interact with these grid lines in any way that you normally would with a standard grid line. And if you want to get rid of the guides because they're getting in the way, you can come up to either the top ruler or the left hand side ruler and just click once and it will remove all guides. And finally, convert to item. Convert to item is this little button right here. And this is a very powerful one to know. When you click convert to item, what this has now done is it has selected your measurement ruler and it has made it its own object. Let's say I create a measurement guide right here. And now I need to use my node tool or my select tool or any other tool for that matter. I select it and oh no, my guides have gone. This is where convert to item comes into play. If I go back to my measure tool, as you can see, the line that I already had is still there. It has not moved. It's non-destructive. You just cannot see this when you're using other tools. So you convert to item. You'll see it slightly change like this. But now when I go to my select tool or any other tool for that matter, as you can see, it remains there. Not only that, but I am now able to pick up the line and move it to wherever I want. But notice that the values will not change. This is going to enable you to look at the size of all of these objects and think if I wanted these objects to be exactly the same, then I can just bring this down. And as you can see, we have the start point, the end point, and the distance in between. And now we can edit this to get it to be exactly the same. So there you have it, my friends. That is how to use the measure tool. I know that was a lot of information coming rushing at you super fast, but once you start using it, it will become very, very easy for you to understand. So like I always say, go out there, experiment, and of course, stay creative. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time. Thank you.